Hello everyone, today we have a fragrance video, a perfume video, and um, this, this one tends to be well liked because I'm going to be showing you the perfumes I'm running out of. I have a rather extensive perfume collection, I have lots and lots to choose from, and the fact that I am uh, reaching for these guys really indicates to me that they are some of the most used uh fragrances not all of them are repurchased i'll indicate to you during the video which ones i've bought more than once uh, and uh, i will sort of uh, walk you through also a very small declutter i'll get rid of a, a, a few of them over here give them to someone else from my immediate environment to enjoy first one that i have here is a fragrance that was in my spring and summer fragrance a video but I have been talking about really getting to use the Parfum de Thé by Kinzo uh, and I did so now I'm approximately maybe halfway through the fragrance it is a very bright floral with aquatic and slightly green undertones but also uh, spiced with sweetness somehow so very happy very bright fragrance very spring for me um, it is something that I reach for every spring. I've repurchased this bottle before, so this is, again, not new to me. I'm happy with it, and I will obviously continue using it. But for now, for the summer season, I am moving on to something a little different. I am craving citruses this season, so uh, I will probably make a separate video about the fragrances that I reach for in the summer. So at the hottest of the hot, as hot as it gets in Canada, which is not very hot, um, but I'll I'll specify what I'm doing in the summer, fragrance-wise. Next one is a total surprise, something that I did not expect at all, and this is number five, Le by Chanel. I'm a big fan of the number five um, line. I at first thought that it might be somewhat of an abomination when they released the Le, that's the newest one in the lineup. Um, my uh, utmost favorite. I, I do like Au Premier very much, but my complete favorite is Eau de Toilette. Uh, however, somehow, I'm not sure why, I have purchased it. I didn't think that I loved it, and I still don't know why I'm reaching for it so much. It's probably because it's so easy to use. There is, there is, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> there is no occasion for which it will be unsuitable. It's lightweight. It doesn't suffocate you. It lacks that um, heaviness that some of the Chanel fragrances can have. It's it's low, so totally works as it's supposed to. And again, this is not my favorite out of the number five range. This is not the one I love the most, but it is apparently the one I use the most. More than half gone. I think this summer it's probably going to be finished before the fall season. And then I'll have to make a decision, because this is my first bottle of this particular fragrance, I'll have to make a decision on whether whether I want to repurchase it. Um, and if you ask me, maybe a, a few months after I, I bought it, uh, whether I would repurchase it, I would firmly say no. However, now that I see that somehow, for some odd reason, I'm really reaching for it, I might reconsider. I might actually, I might actually repurchase Le, and I am very, very surprised about it. Next, we have this guy. This is Serge Luton's La Religieuse. So a little bit of a niche perfumery here. However, really rather available, not difficult to buy. I think Sephora sells it, perhaps. Uh, and this guy is deceptive. It is a deceptive, deceptive fragrance. What we have here is lightweight jasmine. However, during wear, this fragrance kind of changes on itself and creates a far more seductive and sultry uh, impression after perhaps 30 minutes of wear. So this one is a storyteller. Um, things change and mutate and migrate, and you definitely don't get bored with the fragrance because it does uh, do different things at different times of, of when you wear it. It's not heavy, it's pretty lightweight, um, and evokes in me, and possibly the name has something to do with it, but evokes in me a, um, a picture of uh, a picture of um, maybe a monastery, a female monastery uh, in the fields of grass or, or south of France somewhere. 
where you feel like there is absolute blessing and peace descending on you. However, in a monastery, there can be an undercurrent of intrigue and personal vendettas and uh, lack of communication. So all of that that is human nature can still transpire in a monastery and this fragrance for me embodies that. So you see the very innocent uh, jasmine elevated angelic almost um, situation when you first spray but then there's maybe a little bit of almost smokiness there it's it's quite a good find but this is subtle if you're looking for a big statement not no 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 <laughs> this is not gonna work you don't want la religieuse if you are also a big fan of gourmands uh, very very complicated fragrances with like a thousand things in the pyramid um Eastern fragrances, uh, Arabic frag fragrances, if you are a fan of that style of perfumery, you will be disappointed with Latter day Shios because it is a very different beast. Um, if you are into wearable, interesting, sophisticated, elevated, but not loud fragrances, you might want to give La Religieuse a go and see if it is something that you'd be interested in. Um, it's not a, a widely hated fragrance and also I don't think a lot of people wear it. I have very little left of the Carvin uh, Le Parfum, so uh, the Parfum, and I have mixed emotions regarding this guy. As you can see, it's almost completely gone and normally I would use up the fragrance until it's logical completion but this one I will be also passing on and giving to someone else because I just do not feel attached to it anymore. I do think that I should check out the other toilet of this particular fragrance because I actually really like the scent story. I like where they are going with it, but similar to what I felt regarding my Burberry at the Parfum, I feel regarding uh, Le Parfum from Carmen. Unfortunately, when I was talking about my Burberry, I've owned a full bottle and I did force myself to use it up. There are very bright, um, piercing notes there which I really really enjoy but they're contrasted with a very heavy sweet base and that dichotomy could be an absolutely brilliant find but for me it did not work it was too suffocating and the base took over any chance I had at uh, um, lifting and elevating the scent it was just like a wet blanket kind of situation here we have less of that but still present unfortunately because actually again very much like where this fragrance is going but i would prefer to cut all the very damp weighty sweetness out uh, if, if we could do that and maybe add some bright woods and a little bit more citrus i think this would be really really good i wonder what is in the pyramid for the eau de toilette because hopefully if they have similar dna but eau de toilette does not have the same weighty really like meaty base. I think I'd like it, but I'd need to test it first. This one at first I really loved. And then as I was using it more and more, I came to the conclusion that it was just a little hard to stomach over a long period of time because of that wet blanket feeling that I was getting basically maybe one hour, 40, 40 minutes to one hour into the wear because then all the bright happy notes at the top were worn off and you were just left with the uh, with, with this sticky almost sticky feeling and the, the the dampness turned kind of unpleasant with time so the fragrance is still fine uh, it is a beautiful scent and i think someone else might enjoy it more so i will be passing it on this guy is always always present ever present in my perfume drawer I use him all the time, uh, and this is Kinzo Flower Eau de Parfum. I think I should probably try the Eau de Toilette as well, but Eau de Parfum, I'm very much attached to it. I've had it for many years, I've repurchased it many times, um, I've, I'm running low on this, this one for sure. This bottle is not going to survive probably fall, I will be using it in the fall I think, and I will be, um, I think I'll be finishing this bottle up completely lovely uh, violets very cozy slightly candied um, but not very weighty uh, it does have lots of sweetness but it's quite sophisticated and 
um, the fragrance itself is definitely a great find for someone who likes violets. It is a medium weight scent. It does mutate a bit through the wear, but always remains true to itself. I really, really enjoy this. But this is a classic. Lots of people have it. It's not no longer as popular as it used to be, but in its time, after its release, it was a super popular fragrance. I believe maybe in the 90s or early 2000s. I could be wrong because my memory might be fooling me here. The next fragrance I want to talk about is Guerlain, and this is Mont Guerlain. Um, I have the Eau de Toilette here. Uh, in my drawers, I have two more flankers, but this particular one is the Eau de Toilette, and as you can see, I'm about halfway done with this bottle. I have a complicated relationship with this scent. I initially tried it several years ago when it was released, and I had a hard time. It was a little bit too sweet for me, but I enjoyed the overall composition, but it was a little bit too commercial, a little bit too sweet for me. I did retry the other parfum and subsequently a couple more flankers um, this past winter, and it turns out that something happened. My skin is reacting to the scent very differently than previous. And it's not picking up as much stickiness in it as it did before. Whereas the lightness and sophistication of lavender is really uh, coming across a lot more on my skin these days. At the toilet, I have enjoyed immensely wearing. And this is something that I wore this spring. So I pulled out the, the toilet for the spring. I've purchased it in winter along with another flanker. And I've been definitely, definitely using it. I wonder if... This may be something that I use up in the fall. Usually it takes me more than a year to get through a bottle of perfume, but um, this has been a, a real, a real bright ray of sunshine for me. It's a floral with some sweet undertones. It has a lot of uh, pretty, uh, pretty and unique signatures. It has a lot of pretty unique touches, such as there's a little dryness in there as well, which I really like. So Mont Guerlain, surprisingly, again, just as the number five, uh, Le, surprisingly has made it here in under a year, which is uh, a feat. I wonder if it'll survive until 2022. We shall see. I'm not sure yet. Next bottle here is going to be Maison Margiela Replica. Um, and this is by the fireplace. This I bought several years ago. The scent is still fine. It's been stored perfectly. I take every precaution with my fragrances and they really, really last a very long time. I have never had one turn on me in my life. <laughs> and I've kept certain certain bottles for several years, maybe up to three or four years, um, and they were fine. So if you store them properly in a cool, dark place, your fragrances are gonna be okay. Um, this one is about three years old, I believe. I'm not sure. I forgot when I bought it, but I definitely bought it in Montreal. And I think I was living in Montreal, so that must have been four years ago. And I was into purchasing the biggest bottle for the best value. I no longer do that because I, I will go for, for um, uh, variety over amount very easily. I should have bought a smaller bottle and I think I would have been fine with it. But because I bought a larger bottle, I kept wearing it fairly frequently. Um, and unfortunately, I think I got I got a little sick of it. Although this is by the fireplace, as it implies, it is uh, a fireplace sort of scent, very, uh, very uh, photograph-like. So you immediately get transported to a darkened room with uh, leather chairs and a fireplace going and, and perhaps a, a Turkish rug on the floor. So this guy is actually a lovely, lovely scent. I just had too much of it. I need to take a break. I will give it away to someone in my life who might enjoy it and I will possibly repurchase it in the future but no time soon. It's just it's a little much. It's an extre extremely heavy fragrance and as I, I have told you a little bit earlier I have been more into a lighter weight, more effervescent, happy, go lucky, non-challenging things lately and so uh, by the fireplace is a challenging scent, not in a way that it's hard to wear, but it is hard to dose. And also it's very, very dense and it does not change through the wear very much. So I think this is wonderful. 
my thumbs up for it are still up, but not for me. I need to move on and just take a nice long break from it because it's been kind of suffocating me a little bit lately. Another um, bottle that I have featured in my spring to summer uh, perfume wardrobe was the Erin Lilac Path. I'm actually a very big fan of this particular fragrance. I haven't really found something else from their line that I'd be very keen on getting, but Lilac Path, I was completely blown away by simply because it is a very authentic, solid floor, completely natural smelling lilac, which I love. I love lilacs. They evoke a lot of childhood memories for me. And so I found a scent that would give me that exactly that would give me pretty much straightforward lilacs and it's lovely i've been about one third done with it previously and i have definitely used more of it uh, this spring and summer i don't believe that it'll be done in the next 12 months but maybe the next 16 months i feel like it might be completed. I will be repurchasing it. Maybe not right away after I finish it, but definitely I'll be repurchasing it. I will miss it. I've been using for the last two years this particular scent in my spring perfume wardrobe very, very diligently, and I absolutely love it for a spring scent. So uh, it's certainly going nowhere. And here we have another scent that I've been very much using lately. This is more of a summer pick for me. I've been using it in the warmer weather. When you're a little bit sweatier outside, all you want is citruses. And I've been really into citruses. Um, one of the ones that I own is about halfway done, a little bit more than halfway done. And this is Atelier Cologne um, Orange Sanguine. Yes, Orange Sanguine. What a wonderful little treat. Um, it kind of evokes a little bit of a homemade orange popsicle. So not the very sweet sugary stuff that you can get, but like a true sour succulent <laughs> orange popsicle. Uh, very juicy, it's very refreshing. It's like getting a spray, a, a very fine spray of cold water in your face when it's really, really hot outside. Lovely. Clementine California is another one that I'm looking to purchase. So whenever I'm done with the uh, Orange Sanguine, I'll probably buy both of them. Big fan of Atelier Cologne. I think they do very good work, very interesting combinations. Sometimes their, their citruses for me are unbeatable. They really know how to work with citruses. And citrus is a seemingly deceptively easy note and um, used pretty widely. But if you're doing a citrus-based fragrance, it's not easy to make it remarkable. It's not easy to make it interesting and it's not easy to make it wearable and new. Yet, Atelier Cologne do it very well. They have several, several citruses in their lineup. And if you're looking for citruses, I would strongly encourage you to check out this particular line. They just know what they're doing when it comes to, um, to citruses. Here is an interesting little buy. I've purchased uh, this particular fragrance this winter, and this is DKNY Nectar Love. So Donna, Donna Karen, New York, Nectar, Nectar Love. This is a very much of a budget. This is very much a budget buy, um, probably cheaper than anything that you see on my table today. Um, and I've been kind of into, into it, especially in the winter for some reason. It really, really appealed to me. I was on a honey perfume kick and I purchased this one kind of blind because it was inexpensive. So I thought might as well try it out and see how it goes. So <laughs> here we have lots of fruity sourness. There is honey and nectar i would say yes nectar uh, it's it's playful it's bright so pretty crisp floral and there is a lot of uh, sourness that cuts through the sweetness i think it's a nice balance i don't think it's the most sophisticated fragrance ever but it has captured my attention i can't say that i'm a big fan of the bottle although it's fine um, i am a big fan of this little bee over here um, i like bees i hate all animals I really dislike all insects pretty much, apart from bumblebees, those are cute, maybe some butterflies, but I tend to freak with insects. Uh, these are some of the very few that I tolerate. Uh, so Nectar Love was a very, very pleasant surprise. Sometimes you just find those little gems. If you are into a slightly sour, slightly sweet florals with, um, uh, with lots of oomph, then DKNY Nectar Love might actually be a good find for you. I find it very easy to wear. 
again, if you're not into sourness and fruity sourness, this might not be for you. I will be keeping it. And as you can see, it's about halfway done. I'll have to, um, I'll have to see if I will repurchase. I'm not quite certain yet. Speaking of repurchasing, this is a fragrance that's been with me for years and years, and I've repurchased it multiple, multiple times. And this is Balenciaga Paris, uh, the Parfum. This one is on its way out. I feel that this fall, I might very well finish it off and have to be forced, be forced my hand will be forced into a new bottle purchase, basically. But this is a beautiful violet, my favorite violet fragrance. It is um, a bit lightweight, very, very cozy, and reminds me of meteorite powders from Guerlain, the, the little pearls, meteorite pearls. They are, so this is a very comforting scent for me, um, very pretty feminine, a little bit innocent. I love wearing it, and I've been wearing it for many years. I will continue wearing it, and it will never leave me. So if you're interested in violets or purple florals, Balenciaga Paris, is definitely a contender try it out you might really really enjoy it another scent that i will be letting go of and decluttering is this guy and i'm surprised about this as well as you can see i have almost nothing left very little there's still a little bit there to use up but um i have discovered that i'm a little bit over chanel Alouo, and this is Eau de Parfum. I'm interested in looking into the Eau de Toilette. I'm pretty sure Eau de Toilette exists, and I'm kind of interested in looking into a lightweight, less suffocating version of it. Uh, I have similar feelings towards Alouo as I have towards By the Fireplace. I've just had these giant bottles and trying to use them up really gave me an oversaturation <laughs> with this particular scent. I'm just fed up with it. Uh, not to say that it isn't a good scent, it's a very sweet peachy um, situation that we have over here and it's very pleasant and I've had, this is not my first bottle, I've had this perfume previously, but I'm just, I'm kind of not into it right now. Again, it seems just a little bit too heavy, just a little bit too oppressive, <laughs> so I think Alua can go and I'll probably give it away to someone within my immediate vicinity as well. I don't think that this is a bad fragrance. Obviously, I've used up almost all of it and I've repurchased it previously, but I think my taste, my 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 tastes in what I'm looking for at this particular moment might have changed. I'm just not reaching for it. So what's the point of nursing and babying this if it's no good, if it's just not being used? Finally. We have um, another Kenzo number here, and this is Kenzo Amour de Parfum. This is another find that I have been buying for years and years, and this one will stay and will probably continue to be repurchased over and over again. Um, I can't tell exactly how much is in there, but probably a third or so, so really not a lot. I might focus on it this fall as well, just to have, um, you know, clear it out and have a fresh bottle to open next. It is a lovely vanilla. It's one of those vanillas that are extremely comforting. Um, it has lots of florals and some small amount of powderiness to it, and it has rice flour, almost rice flour sort of sensation. It's kind of dry and very, very uh, easy to wear. So vanilla is not always easy to wear. I find if vanilla is kind of damp, it becomes extremely heavy. But this is a very respectable and classic vanilla. Uh, it evokes the same sensation as would a dry vanilla pod. So um, I'm very picky about how I approach the vanilla fragrances, and this is one of the very, very good ones that I definitely respect a lot. Um, it's elevated, it's very elegant, so if you enjoy um, those characteristics of the fragrance, you can look into uh, trying the Amour. Uh, this is not a new release, which is probably why it's not widely spoken about, but it was pretty popular in its day. Um, so give it a try, and I will certainly be keeping my paws on it, probably using it up in 2021, and then repurchasing it in 2022. I do tend to be very faithful to that scent also. So tell me, which scents are you using up or have used up more than half often write it down below i'm curious what kind of sense 
you are reaching for what is most in rotation within your fragrance wardrobe simply because it's a very it's a very good test of what you've been wearing um, and some of the ones that I have here I'm actually decluttering because I've been wearing them so much that I'm over the scent uh, I wonder what those are for you. Did you recently declutter anything and or did you use up or are you on the way to use up certain fragrances? Share with me and with all of us, a little perfume community. So for sure, share it down below. That's it for today. Hopefully you'll have a good day. Stay safe and take care of yourselves. Take care of others. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.